Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the Gadigal peoples of the Eora Nation as the traditional custodians of the land on which we record this podcast, and pay my respects to the elders both past and present. Hi everyone, I'm Tiny Cook and welcome to my podcast, Chuffed. Some of you may know me as the girl who got married to a stranger on TV, which thankfully worked out, and now I'm here chatting with you all on my podcast. And you're probably wondering what this podcast is about. Chuffed is your unfiltered safe space for all things love, career and life. Join me each week as we unpack relationships and dating, a dash of pop culture and have fun conversations with cool people. On this episode, I'm joined by Melinda Willis and this is part one of our chat to talk about our experience on maths. We discuss things that you didn't see on TV from the divide between the girls to the notorious couple swap challenge. So let's get into it. Hi guys, welcome back to the Chuffed podcast. I have a very exciting guest. We have Melinda Willis. (laughs) Thanks for having me. For those that don't know, Melinda was also a cast member on Maths, my same season. And yeah, really, really excited to have Mel on. I feel like we've had such a interesting relationship in the beginning. We've always been quite close and just had such a nice dynamic amongst all of the chaos yeah so I was yeah really keen to get Mel on just kind of chatting through our maths experience chatting through dramas and stuff that's happened afterwards and just yeah I think we usually have been quite quiet when it comes to commenting on anything I feel like we're just like yeah don't say our voice has been very unheard (laughs) so we um thought we just have like a nice little chat yeah let's get into it so I wanted to start off with first impressions of each other on the hens night because I just remember when you walked in which fun fact Mel actually came last at the hens I feel like it was second last yes oh it was you and then it was Janelle yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was you and was last. But they edited it so it wasn't like you were like, what, third or something? I don't know. They edited it weird on the actual show. The, the order was definitely it was out not of right. Order. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. And it's so weird because you go and you don't really know what to do because it's your first time on camera in a group setting yeah. and you're not really told anything. You're just kind of thrown in. Yep, yeah, walk in, the camera's yeah. there, and then just say And then hello. they just like dispersed it and it was like, what do we do? Yeah, now? like, what do you do? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and I just remember there would be some weird things said. There was already the weird dynamics. There was a weird vibe. <laughs> Obviously, we saw Mel and Melissa's <laughs> chat, <laughs> which was just so funny. I know. I love they included mine and Mel's chat and then yours and Mel's chat yes. as well. And mine so. and Mel's chat went for so much long. It was like <laughs> half an hour, but obviously they can only show like a minute of the summer. Bits. But yeah, I remember coming back from that and being like, oh my God, and I can see you locking your eyes. Yeah, like even when we were all sitting, we were all kind of sitting along the couch. I can't remember what we were talking about. And I would like look over to Mel and she would like catch my eye and we'd be looking at each other. And I kind of just, I was like, yeah, she she gets it. Like she just gets me. She gets to vibe. It was like Like, an eye language. (laughs) Anytime we'd always like during filming, we'd look at each other when (laughs) shit would happen. And we just knew. We We just knew. knew. We just knew like, okay, (laughs) she gets like, she's picking up She's thinking what I'm thinking. Yeah. (laughs) And I always love that because it's such a hard thing when you're in a social situation with a lot of extroverted people, you don't really know what it's going to be like and if people are going to respond to stuff the same way. Yeah. And like, I get so awkward when I'm like, oh, like, that's a bit of a weird thing to say. I know. And sometimes you look around, but no one else thinks and it's no weird. No one else thinks it's And that's like, okay. story in my life. Yeah. I'm like, is anyone <laughs> seeing this? So what did you think, like, walking into the hens? Because I was really overwhelmed. Like, I remember getting home from that and I was like, okay, what have I, what have I done? It's a lot. The energy of all the girls was so intense. Like, yeah, I was like, it was, it was really, lot. really full on. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. Like it just was so, yeah, so hectic. How did you feel, you know, after the hands or during the hands and what was your, yeah, what was your kind of first impressions of all the girls and like me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most importantly. Most importantly me. Um, I remember you chat to the camera in the car yeah. and they asked you these questions like how do you think this will go what are you feeling and yes. I remember saying in my application like I don't do well in a big group of girls yeah. um I always feel that you know I just feel that I don't click I feel mm-hmm. that I don't belong um and people instantly look at me and they think intimidating or she's not approachable or she won't be friendly yeah. and that's happened a lot throughout my life mm-hmm. so um and usually people they get to know me and then they realize oh, hey, you know, I started to think that and I'm sorry because you're just not like that. And I hear it a lot, a lot. Totally. I admit, like, I was, like, similar, not necessarily intimidated, but I remember, like, oh, like, yeah, yeah, she's going to be a big personality. I don't know about her. Yeah. And I didn't know because I was, like, either going to really get along with her or I'm going to clash. Yeah, it's like a love or hate with me. Yeah, and I was so glad because I felt like, 
even during filming, I think, like you said, you are very direct with things. I think can, it could potentially rub people the wrong way. And yeah. I think people were like, oh, it might be too harsh. Like the viewers aren't going to like that. But I was like, no, I really think people yeah. are going to like Mel and she's going to say the shit that people are thinking watching it. <laughs> yeah. And I always was like, yeah, but everyone has that kind of um, intimidation element. I feel like I've experienced that in some sense but I, I, I totally understand where you're coming from there because you're like okay I'm going to social situation they're probably going to be judging me they're yeah. probably going to be like yeah intimidated. I'm more scared of them than they are totally of me. yeah every time <laughs> every time yeah and I don't show up my cover-up is just be confident and pretend yeah. that even though you know they potentially are judging you you just don't see it yeah so I come in extra confident and it just yeah. doesn't help with that yeah. um so I remember like saying that and being like worried about that and walking in so and but everyone everyone was really friendly so nice everyone was really friendly um and yeah I remember thinking at the time this as when I walked in I thought this looks like Love Island not maps everyone, everyone was so, so attractive yeah. yeah and that's not not to say that the last, <laughs> last season was at all Maybe I'm just saying season. they <laughs> But they definitely looked, you know how everyone this year was like, oh, they've got influencers, they've got this, this. Like, I definitely felt that when I walked in the room. I was like, everyone is magazine hot. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that I instantly clicked with like a few people, Mm -hmm. but not everyone. Um, And it's so interesting that that kind of, that that went on all through the process and after these, you know, same people. But I do remember that I think you're talking about walking yeah. in and feeling like a comfortable energy around you. So it was like, that's my safe point. I'm going to like navigate yeah. over to who I find is not judging and safe. Um, so you that's what, what I did. It's so interesting. To say that. So I don't think I've shared this before, but I felt, and I'm obviously going to bring it up now, but I, I feel like I'm fine with Claire now, but I remember at the hens, she'd made like a comment about, um, I don't want my husband to come in and want a blonde girl from Bondi. And I was like, mm. oh, what? So me? Uh, yeah, there <laughs> and was, was some like, oh, okay. And there was a couple little comments that obviously I don't think the intent was to be like, you know, it was very, yeah. like, I don't want it, it, uh, how I was reading was, I don't want a guy that's going to be judgy and, and snobby and want a, like a cookie cutter girl. Yeah. I was like, well, why are you going to hit and me with a blonde so from Bondi? Bondi? <laughs> and I was like, hi, I'm tiny. <laughs> I'm from Bondi. <laughs> and I'm blonde. Like, oh, like, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I just remember being like, oh, that just sucks. Like, that yeah. isn't nice. This is when one of the moments when I looked over to you, love Melissa. She is just so amazing. Absolutely love her. She had made a comment about, um, which I think you guys saw, saw her um, wanting like a husband that was Thor. And I remember being like, Thor is like a fictional character. He's a bit dumb and like <laughs> men are like, I was like, oh, really? And he was like, I want a really manly man. And I felt, it was, and I said, I think it's problematic to use the word manly. And I looked over because you were sitting right next to him and I was like, okay, and you give, gave me this like weird yeah. like, oh, oh yeah. Kind of not feeling comfortable. Yeah, and I yeah. just didn't want to like, you know, call her out and stuff because I feel like her, again, her intent wasn't to be like, you know, offensive with using language like that. But I was like, I just don't think, as women, we don't want to have certain, you know, things being like, I want a feminine, I want a, you know, elegant woman or yeah, all this stuff. Yeah, that makes I was sense. Like, I then it? don't want to then put that on men being like, I want a manly man that's going to look like yeah. a whore. And, it's like a guy being know. like, I want a sexy girl and you're like, so yeah. I'm not sexy? And he's like, like okay. Aw. So yeah, I think, um, and obviously she, yeah, she's so harmless, but I remember being like, oh, okay, like, I just don't know about that, like, language. Yeah. And I remember looking over to you and you are like, uh, like, uh, I was all like, your like, smile. <laughs> Yeah, but we do love Mel. We do love we Mel. We love Mel. No, I absolutely love Mel. She's just such an angel. And um, yeah, I felt, I felt really, I really felt for her seeing her. Um, Everything her go edit. down. Yeah, yeah her yeah. and Josh, I always felt, um, felt yeah. for them. But anyway, so we'll, we'll leave that one there. <laughs> but yeah, it was so, it was such an experience going from that and then into the honeymoons and then into the freaking first dinner party. And I yeah. feel like the first dinner party, you were very, you were like, straight in iconic calling Harrison out like one of the first women to actually like be like oh hang on a second like what's going on and really like call him out like all of us were obviously shit talking him and like you kind of like didn't really like yep. from what we'd heard mm. um and I think because we felt obviously hearing Bronte's story at um the hens night we saw how much you know all the shit she'd been through yeah. you guys didn't see this but she had this like really fucked story about like flying to Brizzy for this guy and he like full yep. catfish turn I was like Girl, you got fucking scammed. Anyway, so yeah, I had obviously not, we'd known Bronte's history with dating, and I just felt so bad for her. Yeah, she it was got a guy. almost like an instant. Hang on, this is yeah. gonna happen again because she doesn't know. So it was this instant. Hang totally. on, if no one's pulling it, just in case she's not seeing it. And it's interesting that like you were one of the first, I guess, to really mm-hmm. kind of like 
defend her directly to Harris and all of us were like fuck can't can't be people did it was so interesting that first dinner party you know how you said like you went home from the hens and you Mm. felt like you're Mm. uncomfortable so this is no word of a lie and I this I sat there at that dinner party and after that all happened and like Leighton was talking to Alyssa getting to know him everyone was talking to Mm. everyone and I started to switch back into that mindset of you know, I'm alone again. Like I don't yeah. really fit in here. Yes. Um, and when I'd heard that thing from Harrison and, and I went to tell Lane, I went to tell you guys, like, and I went to tell people and who didn't really think it was a big thing at the time. Um, I don't know where you were, maybe down the other end. Yeah, we would never all, sat next to each other. I feel like yeah, only a we're couple of times separate. we were, but we never were really yeah. close to each other, which was so annoying. Yeah, yeah. I remember like bringing it up and everyone was kind of just like, oh, I remember Lyndall giving me an eye of, yeah. ooh, something's not right there. So I was like, okay, she kind of gets, gets it, it, but does, isn't speaking up, like no one's speaking up. And I remember sitting there and I mm. went a bit quiet and I was just like, I'm not getting along with my partner right now. Like mm. in the beginning, we had not bonded yet. Yeah. yeah. And then there's this douchebag that's reminding me of the previous guy I know. Literally, and then there's yeah. people not getting me. And I was like, I actually think I'm very out of place here and I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Yeah, and yeah. I started getting in my head and then one of the um, producers came over, tapped me on the shoulder and was like, I've just got to check your mic for a sec. And they'd pulled me out. And that's <gasps> when they said... Mel, we just cannot wait to hear what is going on in your head right now. What are you thinking? And I finally just went, blah, this is what I'm thinking. And then when they like agreed and validated it, I was like, I am not crazy and I'm staying. Yeah, no, (laughs) it's so interesting. Like sometimes you need that second to just like take a step out. And like, Mm. I thought that way, I mean, jumping forward, it's one of the dinner parties um, where I had sensed that there was groups within the girls and I wasn't included in it and I was sitting there and I was like oh okay like I kind of went into filming maths really hopeful to have like a bunch of girlfriends and to meet all these girls and have all these like really beautiful friendships and like yes I definitely do have that with some of the girls and get you know for the most part get along with everyone Mm. but I felt at that time I was like oh shit okay like no I should be grateful I have a really good partner I'm getting along with them but I felt I remember seeing that I was at it was the dinner party was at the very end and I was at the end of the table I felt really blocked off from everyone I, was I at the felt very that end. as well with you yeah, like I, I felt like so that sad energy because I was like mm. oh okay so I don't really have many friends here yeah. and like we were close but before we really got that close yeah. and before because I, I we will talk about the moment that we actually became really yeah. close yeah and I remember feeling um yeah really out of place with it because I think it was the first dinner party where I had pulled Bronte aside and I was like are you like what's going on was because my I always felt like not that I was attacked for it but people had criticized me for not speaking up at dinner parties and saying things and I, and I definitely did, and you did yeah but I think my style was more pull so people pull away people have away. a chat bachelor style yeah, you're on the wrong show like, honey yeah and I'm not like <laughs> at you at the dinner table because I yeah. can't with that that's really yeah. stressful for me so my approach is never to like call people out in a group setting so and that shit's just never going to be shown. There's not enough air time to show me having my little side off chats. chats. But I definitely <laughs> did get involved in shit. Anyway. Yeah, you you had opinions. Yeah, and like <laughs> I was calling out the boys. Yeah. It wasn't shown. I remember like even with like some dance stuff, you were like, no, trust me, that is definitely going to be shown because I went at him. Literally. And it was nowhere. And the producer was like, that was so good. Yeah. Like, yes, calling out Dan. You. And then I was like, okay, it's not going to be shown. I remember feeling at a stage during the show because you obviously, I think it was hard for you because you, didn't click necessarily straight up with Leighton and you were kind of forming that and I think at the beginning I was like I need to shut up because I'm having a good relationship I don't want to rub it in his face I don't want to be like talking about any issues that I have because it's so minuscule compared to what other people are going through so I was very kind of like kept to myself and I think people thought me keeping to myself would mean like I don't want to be friends with people I'm not interested and I never would get same with you wouldn't get invited to go do stuff off camera or kind of get included in stuff which I think you know, and I know you've had similar experiences when we chat about this in length, but, you know, trauma for me, like growing up, always feeling a bit left out mm. of like friend groups in high school or like being in the group but then not being in the group. Yeah. So, yeah, I was in like, you know, a, a cool group at school, I guess you could say, inverted commas. Um, there was like fragments within the group, but I feel like I was in like the popular group, let's say, but I was very there but on the outs. Like I was kind of yeah. there but I wasn't there. And I felt, I've yeah, always I feel felt that. that in my life. I get that, yeah. And I was like, I'm going to, no, I'm going to go into this with a positive experience. I'm not going to let my like 
issues I've had because I don't have many friends like I mm. do have good fr- like you know good long-term friendships but I don't have like an abundant amount of friends which I think I've come to terms with that I do like that I think I like having yep. small uh, smaller friendship groups and like more kind of close-knit like really kind of strong friendships but it's always been something I've kind of felt insecure about so I was really not wanting that to be a thing that's so interesting Max. because me too yes and, and we like, spoke about yeah, this that's so is, interesting which is so weird because I think that's when we then bonded so after we'd kind of sensed this stuff and it really and we're going to talk about it um yes. that it really kind of came to a head when the kissing cheating scandal happened and I think um because that was like what week I don't even know what weeks so they all kind of smushed into it, one uh, yeah like week four week three week four I feel like that's when it was brought up yes but it, it happened before original happened what wasn't it yes. like a week after we were all it's guys yes yeah it was yes. So very it quite early on mm. but even with that being said like there was a group of people that were invited to go out and like we weren't invited we, ne- we never got those invites yeah. and it's hard not to be like cut about like not being included in yeah stuff because at that moment like no we're one all really fresh. no one knew each other yeah so nothing had really happened yeah and and to be honest, at that moment, all that had really happened, like from my side, is me having the girls back. Yeah. So to not be invited as well, it's like, mm, yeah, this is it's hard to read into things. And I feel like I'm mm. notorious for overthinking and taking things too personally, but it's hard not to be like, oh, okay, it's obviously a problem they have with me or, yeah. or whatever. But I remember, and when that happened, I feel like me and Mel really just wanted to kind of just chat through, I guess, our experience and like, you know, Mel's experience with you know, what happened in like the sequence of events. Cause there's a lot of stuff that for obvious reasons, isn't going to be shown on like a 50 minute TV yeah. episode. Like so much stuff gets filmed and happens that you guys don't see. And I think, you know, there's a lot of context missing. If it was me, I reckon they should get like cameras everywhere for maps, hidden cameras. Yeah. Like, like, like filming brother 24 style. seven. Cause that would be good TV. <laughs> Cause then you People really would watch see. that. Like <laughs> all the, all the like off camera yeah. stuff that happens. Cause they film so like a hundred hours yeah. per couple. Yep. Yeah. Is it? it is, no way. So it'd be so much. More is it? Than so that. it's ten hours a day per couple, and they film for like six days. Yeah. Sometimes five. Yeah. And then you have twelve couples. Yeah. That's oh, that's, that's a lot of content. That's a lot of content. A lot of content. And to put it into that hour and a half, and then split that by yeah. the couples, you're getting like twenty minutes each, if that. Yeah. There's so, so much, much missing. missing. So I think you know, obviously that friend like the girl girl dynamic wasn't really shown as much but I think where it really came to you know where I felt insecure about and I think Mel would agree with this was yeah when the cheating scandal came out and how it from from, I'll talk from my perspective but you can jump in too I think we so I remember obviously you guys saw when there was like the doom doom on the door and we were at Molly and Maya's room was right next to Janelle and Adam so we heard that we heard Jesse popping off like I was out here being like what the fuck's going on like it was crazy like I literally got woke up in the middle of the night Ollie was like on the couch and like it was chaos so we had seen and there was like all this stuff going on Ollie had saw Janelle crying in the hallway and she's like I can't talk about it now but I'll talk about it later so we knew something happened and I was like what the fuck has Adam done does not cry like she was so Strong. so when That's I was instant. like something's happened and mm. like we I didn't want to chat and I also felt because and you were the same like I didn't want to know off camera I was like no let's do it on camera I don't I don't like faking shit like yeah I know that happened we know that fucking happened yeah. but I was like don't tell me anything anything like please be on camera yeah so when you see Janelle tell us about the cheating scandal that's all like genuine yeah apart from the cutaways of the extra shots yeah but when and we that have was, some kind of knowledge yeah. but we don't want to jump to conclusions yeah like, and we were like what the fuck but the thing that hurt the most and me and Mel were having a chat which we got yelled at when we were like on camera Mel and I were the only ones that didn't know about the kiss yeah out of the girls knew. all the other girls had, yes. knew about it yes and I was like and they oh, knew about it since the Friday yeah, I think for it a, came out for a like while. Monday or something like yeah but and no it was it was longer was than that it, well Sandy knew about it from the Some get-go because she the saw beginning. it yeah. apparently oh that's what I read and, and I heard her respond sure sure in that she this saw it or saw a message or something she knew something about that, it yeah and alluded to it was like someone's oh, gonna yeah, come clean there was messages i saw between adam and sandy yes or something. That, yes yeah. exactly so i think it, for us it was like oh okay we didn't know why were we not told yeah. and i was like oh maybe it's because we're quite close with janelle like i, I we yeah. didn't know because it was weird because then we were sensing that there was a bit of a divide in the girls the girls group and mel and i haven't really spoke about this because i feel like we haven't really wanted to like make a th- of yeah, it. I don't but, know. but some reason things are coming up. Things now. are coming up now. So things like under that rug that we were just gonna kind of leave there. 
they're starting to be dug out. Yeah, and, and it's like we want to kind of share, I guess, what, what we experienced. Yeah, because I we... feel we really went through it. And totally. I feel like I, f- I almost feel like it's 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 coming across the other way now totally it's yeah. like it's like when the you know it's almost like when the the victim is like, <laughs> i feel yeah. like that like which yeah it's just looking like it's, it's hard because i feel like sometimes not commenting on things is a better approach and i usually mm. will take that approach but sometimes it's, it's a like, bigger oh, person just shit when you feel like that's just not how things went down yeah. or like that's not a fair representation of what happened and i think you know and and like i said like i feel like i'm fine with most of the girls now like mm. i think it's like i'm happy just to keep things like we had a shared experience we're fine i don't really want to have like major beef with anyone but you know it really hurt me to know that you know we were being excluded from things there was yeah. also some really nasty stuff going around about mel like i had heard like things like nasty names mel's been called like mm. you'll be called like the wicked witch or something like that yeah well um, apparently though and this was like only a couple of weeks in again was um there was a lynch mob it, so they they were called the lynch mob and they were the pa- ones with the x's this is what i heard i heard this from adam yeah, actually right. okay and okay, adam let's knew because, just take the, let's yeah. take the source as a grain of well, salt but. well no because janelle was partnered with adam and janelle sure. also knew because janelle okay, also right saw it all and melissa came to me i was she was the first one to give me the heads up and she melissa. said there's a group chat what a and your topic melissa. of conversation and mm. she goes i feel really bad now mel because i was included in it and i actually right. have gotten to know you and i actually really like you but i need to let you know that there is a group that is against you and she listed off the names for me right and it was a, it was a shock Wait, to me melissa or Alyssa? melissa melissa okay it was a shock to me right. um and then janelle called me to give me heads up on things mm. um adam had gone to Leighton to give him some heads up that there was this group forming against sure. me okay and it's so interesting because nothing had happened yet no it was just this they didn't they obviously you know that the maybe ju- thought i was judgment. unapproachable maybe yeah but it's so so interesting because you know, me and Leighton fought a lot through it. A lot of totally. the times I was down, you know, we both were down. Yeah. We were going through a lot. You guys and had a hard time. It yeah, easy. we had a hard mm-hmm. time. So I think mm-hmm. sometimes people could also, rather than check in on me and say, how are you okay? Mm-hmm. They just think she's strong, she's confident, yeah. she's with her partner, she's people good. Assume. She must and not I like me. I relate to that, babe, because I feel like people mm-hmm. like, they're fine, they're fine, would really just push me and Ollie to the side. When like, we had our fucking struggles too. Yeah, you did. And yeah. I feel like I just kept my mouth shut. I was like, well, I'm not out here screaming at people or like having major problems. Yeah. But I feel like, yeah, because if you... They're like, oh, no, you're a strong woman. You're going to be fine. You're not going to – you and Leighton are fine. Mm. You know, you're going to yeah. work through it. So if she's upset, it must be at me. Yeah. It can't be that there could be this some other thing. I'm let me check in on a girl. Else. Yeah, yeah, like I would have loved someone to come and just like one of, you know, one of those was to come in and check in. Mm. So I could say, hey, like let me confide in someone else because like you're quite alone in that experiment. You're not 100%. really allowed to talk to anyone. You're not. And that's the thing. Mm. And I feel like – I'm like the worst because I was like such a rule follower. Like I just did not want to get a single hair out of line. Yeah. I was like, I'm not getting fucked Your in this textbook. edit. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I just, maybe that was why um, I didn't have those kind of more closer friendships. Because I wasn't. Yeah, gonna... maybe it wasn't because we were rebelling. Exactly. We weren't invited to get yeah, the that's option. What I, mean. I didn't get the option to break We didn't off. get the option to see if we wanted to rebel or not. <laughs> so I, think... I remember even, <laughs> yeah. you know, Claire had messaged Leighton. Like I never even had Claire's number. Like Claire had, had messaged Leighton to invite him to go right so he was even included in this group and i was left out sure, yeah. i remember seeing like lindell in the the waiting room and we come down the hallway and she run up to Leighton for a hug like and oh. I, it, it was early days like nothing had happened so, so I, from the beginning i started to feel like okay uncomfortable people don't like like me yeah people don't mm. like me so that starts to make you feel like act a type of way yeah. right it's a little more shut off it's a little more guarded it's a little i'm not in this group so when the girls went out and they all got those ex tattoos and they yeah, tried and to I remember was... that that dinner party wherever it was it came out mm. and i was like i sat back and i was like oh the producers didn't want us okay. to talk about it and then it never was brought <laughs> up but it yeah. was a pretty big thing like to get matching tattoos with someone's pretty like you know, that's yeah, that's a big. Yeah, four of a, them got it. Yeah, that's a big thing. To me, that's like a huge thing to do. Yeah. Maybe like, I, the fact that we even out so. together, then doing that, then coming in, then knowing information about a cheating scandal and and yeah. keeping it, and just that whole knit group just started to form, and it really started to create this huge divide. Sure, right? Yeah. There was a split. It was an even split. And you and I remember this was like when it was peak drama, first dinner party when the intruders came in. And we were in, I think we were one of the, we were the first two, weren't we? We were the first two in that dinner party. And when Taylor came in, I fucking love Taylor. I love Taylor. I actually love Taylor. She's a funny bitch. She's <laughs> yeah. chaotic. 
um, but our she's lover what, for like it. she's truthful and she, in yeah, a and world you know like mass you need that and truth. i think that the, mm. the the reason why i'll defend taylor although i don't defend all of her actions i really don't she's done some shady stuff she knows that she knows yeah. how i feel about it but she always fucking stayed true to herself she never faked shit for the cameras yeah and she was just genuine genuine she and was. like yes she hurt some people and i don't agree with that mm. but she was just her. this unhinged chaotic chick and like part of me fucking loves that yeah like what you see is what you get and that totally. was refreshing because so many two-faced Absolutely. masks were yeah and rude. she came in hot like she came in and then she she obviously knew about the kiss because she was at was yeah. obviously exposed at her wedding she came in and she was being a bitch and yeah. first of all she rubbed me the wrong way and i wish Same. they showed this she was like asking about the husbands yep. and then um they're like oh which was yours they're like oh ollie over there he's like oh he's got a mud he's cute like keep him away from me and i'm like bitch what are you yeah. talking about so i yeah i was like off taylor at that time i was like yeah. nah and she turned her. to janelle and she when janelle oh was trying God, to so this yes. was for me when janelle with the was like really upset janelle was so upset she was like trying not like, to cry not and this this new intruders come in and janelle thinks she doesn't know so she's gonna tell her look one of the girls hooked up with my husband, blah, blah, blah. And I only just found out. They kept it from yeah. me. It was a big just lie. Just letting blah, blah. you know as you've just yep. come in. Yeah. And then we knew Taylor knew. We, me and Melinda We knew know Taylor that the girls knew. met up with Taylor before yeah, so to get her on their heard, little recruiting we side. We heard through yeah. the grapevine that like, I can't remember who it was she ran into. She ran into one of the girls at Bondi Junction and then yeah. had told that yeah. she was, basically she knew about it. So me and Mel knew going that she to the party that she knew. But like, she sat there. Her acting skills. And she said and she said to Janelle, so Claire's not your husband. I don't understand why yeah, you would have a problem. The issue. So then she went into and this divide men. And you know when and Ev we came like, in, okay, yes. the reason I liked Ev and they didn't show this, right? Yes. The reason I instantly was drawn to Ev was Ev came in. We were over here. Yeah. That crew was over there. Taylor had picked her crew. Yeah. <laughs> Ev came in and said, what is going on? And I remember saying, you don't need to pick any sides. We it doesn't even need happened. to be this. Yeah. I'm going to just say very very top level yeah what is top happening notes, dot, dot, yeah dot. but go get to know them go yeah. hear their story and i remember saying all this like and we did that we were not yeah because that shat me that episode was that they tried to make it look like we were gang up on claire yeah. and that was not what that, happened. that didn't happen that, that did never not happened. happen yeah it was just that was just so not fair no, and i that feel was like not, okay, yes Alyssa was <laughs> over the top with her reaction 100 percent. she knows that she's acknowledged it she yeah. feels shit about it i in part would defend Alyssa with her traumas coming out for her, you know, similar experiences she's had in the past with being that woman and her feeling some extreme guilt with it. She then doesn't want to see someone put someone else through that. So I get the argument of people coming for Alyssa in that circumstance. Yeah. I thought it was a bit much because I, 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 no, I guess we knew Alyssa, we knew the story, we knew where it was coming from. We knew from. What, all the context of where it was all Yeah, and like from, we obviously yeah. didn't know how Claire was feeling. So obviously it was fucking awful seeing how Claire felt. And like I would hate to feel like that going into a group dynamic when everyone doesn't like you. Yeah. So I feel like she oh, can how the tables to, turn. Yeah, so she can kind of understand how that – so I felt mm. bad that she felt like that. Like it made me so hurt to see her like have that very visible panic attack, you know, at the dinner party. That's fucking awful. It made it look like we were – um, gang up but like I so hated Claire yeah. like I was I, I had a chat with Claire I was listening to her side like I was very open to yeah. it and so were you yeah. um, and, and I remember that's the commitment ceremony when it was a whole thing like coming for the whole which we'll get into because that was a big mm. thing that wasn't shown that we wanted to discuss that was a whole thing because we yeah, it, it didn't obviously it looked that way with snippets that were shown but it wasn't as intense as it felt because we were having those chats with Claire and we were hearing her side whereas that wasn't shown yep. to you guys so it looks like we're not yeah so it's so interesting as a viewer the, like yeah, you just really go well they didn't do this and yeah. it's like no we did do this I think it's like, just not it's, shown i'm very like you can say so much about your edit but i think more so for me it's just like stuff that's not shown it's not it's necessarily just what is shown yeah. sometimes it can be a little bit like chopped and changed but it's what's not shown sometimes that's the key thing that's like, yeah. okay well you know we had this chat or this happened yeah. um and then you guys didn't see that so you guys and that would like, change the game it would change the game like if someone's saying hey like i didn't like how mel didn't do this yeah but i did do it and it wasn't yes. shown now these people actually think yeah. i didn't and that's what's really hard mm. with all this like with with this public stuff is like you know when you know your truth and you know something happened but yeah. you it's so you feel like you have no voice and you don't want to comment on it and make it worse but it's kind of like because they're like i saw it with my anything eyes. makes it look like you're mm. kind of like 
agreeing to it or, or whatever, yeah. right? After that dinner party, we had the commitment ceremony the next night. And that was like the big block where the divide kind of came out, which again, you guys did not see. You know, I think... It but it's so interesting because that divide, right, was with the like OGs. And yeah. then when the intruders came in, like, so Taylor went to that side. Ev heard instantly, like and then just heard, all, yeah. all Ev heard was, oh, this person kissed this person. And yeah. Ev went, well, I don't want to sit over there. And yeah. she sat with us. Sure. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it yeah. actually like this divide really cemented. And I remember At the that producers ceremony, yeah. digging for this storyline mm-hmm. of this divide and I think and I always said I think they part of me was like do they want a similar like uh huge blob like you know last year's with like Dom and Olivia did they want something like that with the girls being a divide then Mm. it was like no I feel like they want more women empowerment it was really hard to understand what um what angle things were going but I think at that commitment ceremony so what what happened is the kiss came out and I remember Taylor saying something and me and you were like, nah, you knew. Like we were kind of like, <laughs> Taylor knew. me and Mel we were like peppering her. On camera, we, we all like, said, nah, Taylor, you, you knew. Did Don't you? sit there and lie. We were like, Taylor, did you or did you not meet up with the girls prior to the show? And she went, well, that's irrelevant. And we're like, no, it's not. No, it's not, babe. Yeah. And then, then there was the whole like divide happened. I feel like the girls on like the other side of it felt, you know, oh, that that wasn't wasn't their intention. That wasn't what was happening. But I think for us, we're like, well, this is how we feel. You might not have intended to make us feel left out or that, but we mm. we felt. Left I remember Lindell caring like yeah, quite Lindell a bit. Yeah, Lindell was like, oh, okay, yeah, like she, she saw it and acknowledged how, it, yeah. and, and then said, oh, I didn't mean to for do, you to feel, yeah. which was really nice. Yeah. Where I didn't feel that we got that from the other girls. We got, mm. we actually got kind of cast. Like, well, remember? then they're like, no, that's not happening. No, that's they were like, like, I think that's in your, um, that's in your head. And we were like, oh, we being gaslit. <laughs> so I hate anytime gaslit was mentioned. I was like, I'm not saying that. That's so bins. embarrassing. The buzzword <laughs> of the fucking year. Yeah, um, but I was like, but it's we're literally thing. being gaslit. You no, know, right we now. were. We were being told it was in our head, and we were like, we're like wait, but why are we the only ones still being included? <laughs> <laughs> think of our. <laughs> But yeah, but so you, that was it, you kind of laugh out about that was like the um yeah that was like a huge thing. It was early it was like, days yeah yeah and it was a big divide in the group and again it that was Alyssa really Janelle shown. me and you yeah and, and then Ev came Eve, in yeah. and yeah. then there was five and then it was Claire Sandy Bronte Lindell and then Taylor came in yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. that's the, yeah. the divide that was kind of there and it wasn't in our heads because the producers were asking yeah. the questions they were asking were specifically. D- doing that split yeah and it was just interesting then seeing it not be played out on tv because i thought that was a crucial um thing because you guys obviously didn't see certain relationships of us forming with you know some of the other girls and like i didn't have many relationships with like majority of the cast at the time which i have now formed after the show and mm. like i have built those friendships with majority of the girls i, d- I didn't have that on the show because of like, because of this mm. and you know obviously there's circumstances like you're not really allowed to hang out and do all that stuff and you do form more close connections after the fact but yeah like it w- i didn't feel like i got the opportunity to and i feel like at the end when it was just like five couples left mm. i really felt like really bonded there yeah. i think we even had our little whatsapp group called mm. the maths survivors yeah we did maths <laughs> and i loved that because it was kind of like we all the drama was almost gone and yeah. it was really focused on like who who is doing well who is struggling like how can we all work together to like help each other within these relationships yeah. and really got focused on that which was interesting as well because they that dynamic again wasn't played too much. Yeah. But that's when I thought, okay, I'm really bonded with who's left. Mm-hmm. I really feel I'm really upset when they're upset. I'm really happy when totally, they're happy. Like yeah. I really want their relationship to work and they really want mine to work. And it was then so interesting that after really the show involved. it kind of mm. that all just went. It was like we were so normal. involved in each other's lives, like mm. every single element of relationships, lives, and then to being completely not. It was such an and then it got catty. Up. And then it got a little bit, yeah, it got a little bit yeah. intense. But I think, yeah, going back to, because that was like really early days. Then we had the retreat and the retreat kind of kicked off, um, especially with like Bronte and Harrison. I yeah. felt, I really felt for Bronte because part of me was like, oh, like I just wish she would like snap out of it and listen. I knew deep down because I've had, and again, like going back to, you know, things that you didn't see, I had had chats with Bronte on camera one-on-one before that three that um chat we had I went pulled Bronte aside at retreat and I was like hey this happened at the girls night this is how the girls are feeling this is what's happened I'm just letting you know so you have a heads up and then you can be like 
this is what this is what you're going to do moving forward and then it's her storming to you and having the discussion with yeah. you and I was like oh okay but I had had a chat with Bronte about that and then yeah. we had, you had me you and Evelyn had, we a, chat, had a chat yeah. and then I was like Bronte you know like once an apology she feels attacked and you're like nah I'm not kidding <laughs> yeah and I fell for Bronte because I was like yeah of course she feels like a bit alone and like feels attacked and obviously our intention was mm. never to make her feel that and way you know what like I sent Bronte and she brought this up on the commitment ceremony too that's what she was referring to I sent Bronte a really big text to mm. just say like you know we shared this thing me and Bronte because we had both come from bully like being bullied yeah, and totally. everything like that so we had quite a, a similar story yeah um and it just happened you know it was just a shame that yeah. like obviously who she was paired with and how everything happened yeah but I did feel quite close to Bronte in the yeah. beginning um and then everything kind of separated but I do remember sending her this reach out text yeah. to check in and just say like I don't ever want you to feel like victimized or bullied totally. or ganged up on that. Like that's just not what it is. Absolutely. It is a care for yeah. I remember getting a really nice reply from yeah. her to say like, you know, no, I, I get it. It's just, I've been through this before. I'm just, you know. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And she thanked me for that. So then we were kind of back on that good terms. We want you to be happy. We don't feel like this relationship with Harrison is working and we want we want you to be happy mm. that was that was really where it was all coming from and, and yeah. I know she knows that now and she's very like you know aware of that now so she had a fucking hard time but yeah I remember being like Bronte you know what are you doing I was like that's not like that's not cool like I was so I was really off her at that commitment ceremony. You guys Everyone didn't was. see that. Even like um, Lyndall and her were best friends and during it. And they had a full Lyndall... argument at that commitment yeah, ceremony. Harrison was... was popping off at everyone. Like there was so much more that could have been oh, shown yeah. that commitment ceremony. GC. Yeah. And then obviously I we, I chatted with Bronte after and she's like, yeah, I'm really sorry. Like I didn't want you to feel that way. And I was like, no, totally. And I was like, in hindsight, I can see why you would have felt attacked. And, you know, yeah. again, it's hard when you're, you're, going to a situation where you feel like fuck people are judging me or people don't like me or people don't like mm. what I've done or you know it's really hard and so when you are balls. like rocky with your partner yeah they don't to have them support. either like yes you yeah. do. yeah and it's hard because again like you guys were not allowed to hang out off camera you only can hang out with your partner so can you imagine like not getting along with the one person you can talk to you can't talk to your family mm. you can't go home like I felt I get it hey Sydney, like, but now when you're saying like all of that I'm, st- I'm starting to like remember some things and yeah. then I'm like you do this you do this you're like oh no I, I feel sorry for them like I want it. and then you're like no hang on but then this yeah. because right like ugh, this I remember the executive producers pulling me aside and they had like a good hour and a half chat to me right and it was like there was a lot going on at the time but before we get into that stuff like I remember Bronte calling me and it was a FaceTime mm-hmm. she was telling me that her and Claire had just gone to Manly to have a drink <gasps> together okay I know this, this yeah no yeah yeah no, tell it okay <laughs> I know a lot yeah. and I got a lot in my phone, but hey. <laughs> We're picking um, and choosing. <laughs> hey, um, it's a slow burn. Um, I remember her calling me and she had said she, you know, her and Claire, they didn't like their partners. They weren't weren't going to get along. They want to stay, blah, blah, blah. They have made a pact at that drink mm. that they were going to get along with their partners. And try their best. Yeah, try yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so they came back and so Bronte was not living with Harrison Claire and Jesse were not living together, but did they ever? (laughs) Um, But they had come back and they had gone from like this big hate thing and, you know, I hate my partner to, oh no, I want to give it a chance. But it was because they made a pact to stay together in this and, yeah. Can I say yeah, fake it? No. I don't know. So it was really confusing for us to then be like week on week, on, off, on, yeah. off, hate, love. Yeah. It was so confusing. And then, and then things like that where it's like, where it's like, okay, cool. Uh, we've had a conversation. F these guys. We hate these guys. Like mm-hmm. they're not going to let us leave. Like we're going to stay here. Like, you know, they're it not so going to make us leave. Yeah. And then that next day, like Bronte moves back in with Harrison yeah. and Claire starts to get along with Jesse. It was so So for confusing. me, I'm conflicted, right? Yeah. Because I'm like, but who am I – if I'm backing certain people yeah. and then I'm hearing things like this, now I'm conflicted with my morals. Because it's like your – which is so hard, right? Putting it in a real-life circumstance because maths isn't really real life. We can't forget that. If I had a girlfriend and she was like, my partner's fucked and moving out, all of this stuff, and then she was to get back with him, think about that scenario and how mm. you feel and how mm. you would talk to your friend. But in this, you can't have that same approach because you're like, but are you staying because you want to stay or yeah. are you staying because you want to make it work? Because obviously if you're – it's hard because I feel like – depending on the circumstance, I probably would or wouldn't encourage, encourage my girlfriend. If they're an asshole, I'd be like, fucking dump him. Yep. But if they was like, no, I feel like you can work through it. Obviously, I want to help my girlfriend yeah. and try and make her relationship work. Every relationship has struggles. Everyone has a hard time. It's not all perfect, but it's hard in a situation like maths knowing what yeah. 
eat what are, are they out yeah, you know? like, like what is it you yeah. can't have what you would approach with your girlfriends on the outside yeah. because it's not the same because if my girlfriend was moving out and not staying with them, I was like okay yeah cool but yeah. then wants to move in with them I'm like but what happened before? Like, are we over that? Yeah. Do you want me to and be this over it? Do you want me different. to be cool with them? Do you not want me not to be cool with them? Do you want me to call them out? Do you want me like, yeah. This is like a yeah. five month application process. It's like, you've gone through how to get here. Then you've got people like, you know, Caitlin and Janelle and where it's, it's taken away from sad. them. And it's they And it's a big yeah. thing. Yeah. And it sucks. And like, I'm like, that's shit. Like, getting just getting to the point of like being on the show is such a slog like all the stuff you do so you know and then with that hope of like finding someone having this really fun yeah it's it's desperation do you know what it's so funny because you you like allow things that you wouldn't allow a hundred percent so those girls when you're you're watching it and you're yelling at the screen like wake up it's like hang on in the real world she ain't putting up with this yeah she's here going you know what Fuck you. Yep, I'm going to stay because you're not going to wreck my experience and I'm going to have a good time. Like, yeah. So it's so different. It's not, oh, she's mm. so weak she won't leave the relationship. It's she doesn't want to leave the experiment because of this douchebag. Yeah. <laughs> like, the experiment's fun. Yeah. You know? And it's hard oh. because you just don't know. Yeah, you don't know when you're in it. I feel like, yeah. which is so cliche, but you only know when you're doing it. Like it's hard to explain it to someone. Like that Janelle was so conflicted. It. I remember her being like, like, it's, yeah, it had been was, three I weeks. Really she wanted to, to stay. Retreat. Yeah, I really wanted, she wanted to, to do retreat. She wanted to do all these things. And then she was conflicted because she was like, but I can't set this example to people yeah. that this guy's cheated on me and that I'm just going to allow yeah. it. But then I also remember with the Claire stuff, mm. she allowed the Adam stuff and she didn't want to allow the Claire stuff, but then she felt she had to allow the Claire stuff. Yeah. Because we're on maths yeah. and because there's viewers and because of this. So you totally. really do get in your head and you get really conflicted with, I know my morals and boundaries, yeah. but I can't let them all stay true in here. And I, I mean, I try hard. And, and you know what? And I would agree with that. And I really want to get into the couple swap because I was like, what the fuck? But I was, I, I was like, my reaction was more taking the piss. I was like, this is a fucking joke. Right. So I was like, ha ha staying with Rupert for three nights. Like, I yeah. literally thought it was a joke. Yeah. And then when I was like, Leighton was so serious about it, I was like, am I like, should I be more like pressed by this? <laughs> in the real world, never, ever, ever would you be in that situation. You know. Especially with someone you <laughs> And you don't dislike. have contracts waving you over your head. You like. Yeah, you don't have to be, you don't yeah. have to do it. And I felt like. Yeah, um, I felt like he was taking it so serious. Like I, it's, yeah. it's from that moment, I felt that he then started to think, or is this girl trustworthy? Would she and, go yeah, and stay? You know what? And I can kind of see where his head's going to be at. It's like, oh, is she just like staying to be a part of this drama? Like, is she going to feed into this whole conflict with yeah. Harrison? Like, is he, she wanting to do that? And it's so fair for him to feel that way as well. But then it's like, well, no, you're my partner. Like, you got to know that like I'm in this and that I want this. And it's just something that... Because I could tell, like, when you Because you know were, what the producer said to me? You didn't want to fucking me. do it, but Oi, you had to I do it. I did not want to do and it. And I knew you didn't want to do it. In the beginning, Leighton was okay to do it. Okay. Like, this is what annoys Your me about it. reaction when you, like, up in arms, getting that letter. Do you think that my just goes in 10 seconds? The producers had me for two hours I in the room alone with that. So that was part one of my chat with Melinda. Make sure you stay tuned for next week to hear part two. And don't forget to follow at Pod on Instagram and TikTok. See you guys next week.